All right, so welcome back. So we're going to kind of keep chugging along, learning about some different Swift features. Uh, what we're going to talk about this time is collections. So collections are primarily arrays and dictionaries. We're going to focus on arrays more than other things, just because we're going to use them a lot in this class. But I also wanted to mention dictionaries to you. So go ahead and find your uh, follow alongs folder uh, that you should have downloaded from earlier uh, and find collections. So go ahead and open up that guy. So when you open it up, it should look like this. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through and we're going to make an array, right? So you can make an array uh, of strings. You can make any array of strings you'd like. I'm just going to make one that's the names of the people in my family. Uh, and the basic syntax of array is, is very simple, right? So if I wanted to grab the uh, index at location 1, that's Christy. Of course, it's a zero-based array. Uh, if you wanted to do things like changing an element, that's also pretty easy. So you would just say, like, you know, names at, at location 2, change it to Kingsley. And then if I wanted to, to print the names again, uh, I could go ahead and see what the names are at this point. Uh, and so you can see I've kicked McKinley out of my family, and I've put in our dog, uh, which is not very nice to McKinley, uh, but you can see how arrays work. There's also a lot of functions that you can use that are related to arrays. Uh, so, for example, if you wanted to see if a, a certain item was in there, uh, contains is something you can use on anything that has a sequence. Uh, so an array is a type of sequence. Strings are also sequences. So if I wanted to say, hey, does names contain uh, Dave, uh, and then I could print out a message if it does, uh, then you can see that Dave is present uh, in this array. Uh, by the way, contains is, is one of the many functions uh, that is kind of poorly documented, uh, is I guess the best way to say it. Uh, and there's a lot of people out there that are saying, hey, here's what these functions are. Uh, so the functions that are in the standard library uh, just don't really have great documentation at present. Hopefully they'll, they'll fix some of that up. Uh, but at present, I've used this site uh, to try to find functions like contains. seems like a lot of these functions that aren't documented well yet are for sequences, arrays being one of the primary types of sequences. It's also pretty easy to do things like adding and appending values. So if I wanted to make another array here of ages, I could start it with uh, no values. Uh, I could say, hey, it's just a, an empty array. Uh, so if you wanted to start it with no values, it's funny, the syntax feels harder. Uh, you say brackets uh, around the outside, and then you say what the, it's an array of in the inside. <clears throat> this syntax with brackets around the thing um, officially started in Swift 1.1 when they first launched it. The syntax was different, uh, and they fixed it uh, to be the syntax, and I kind of like the syntax. There's another way you can do the syntax as well, where you say array, and then like less than, int, greater than, int, kind of like Java. Um, but I kind of like this syntax, and so then this is a constructor uh, for that, uh, to make that array. And then if you wanted to, you could just go through and you could append different numbers. Uh, I'll just kind of append a couple numbers and it'll be great. Uh, also, if you want to do things like insert, uh, you know, you can start typing and then once it auto-completes, you can hit enter. Uh, so if I wanted to insert the element uh, 34, uh, if I want to do that at index 1, um, I could actually get that to show up uh, in the middle uh, of the array. You could also do things like uh, uh, concatenation, uh, which is kind of neat. So if you wanted to concatenate uh, and put on more values, uh, so here I'll just kind of stick on a couple more values. You can actually just use a plus equals operator. So they try to make a lot of things pretty easy for you in the Swift language, which is really, really pretty nice. Other things you can do is you can remove items. So you can see that if I wanted to, I could remove all, I could remove something in an index, uh, or I could remove the last element. Uh, so there I just chose to remove the last element. And the nice thing about playgrounds is if you ever wanted to look at it again, uh, you could always just type it on a line by itself and it prints it. Notice that remove last also turn the element, so it's a good way to pop things off uh, if you wanted to do that. Uh, there's also a couple built-in functions for arrays. So if you wanted to say, is it empty? Uh, there's actually a Boolean property you can call on that. A little confusing that it's a property, not a function call, uh, but that's fine. Um, and you know, if it was empty, you could print out a message. So if it had been empty, it printed that out. Uh, you can also do things like, uh, here I've said, else if. <coughs> ages.count. I wanted to include this one because I wanted to show you that you say dot .count on an array, which is different than how you got the length of a string. Strings were uh, count elements, which you could probably do here as well. But dot .count has been around for a long, long time on arrays in Objective-C, and so they use the same things here. So you can see it did not print for is empty. Uh, it did print for this. Note that is empty, you could also just say count equals zero. Uh, so there's so many ways to do things. 
Speaking of so many ways to do things, uh, I won't go into all the things you could do with arrays, right? Um, but there are really just, just so, so many things you could do with arrays. Uh, here what we're doing is we're randomly selecting some values. I don't expect you to memorize all this syntax, but if you need it for something later, here's like a way you can create a random array. Um, and then I'm doing some other things with closures, uh, which admittedly we haven't gotten to yet. We will soon. Uh, to where I'm filtering it for only the ages that are for teenagers. Um, and then here I'm sorting the array uh, so that my teenagers are in an appropriate order. I noticed that if you make a change, it'll actually rerun this code. It's kind of fun to see, you know, the random number generator, how many teens it gets each time. So there I got only four teens. Um, and this uh, is actually kind of slowing down my, my program. But I just kind of wanted to show you that there are just so, so many things that you could do with arrays. Little teasers of things there. Other things that I wanted to mention about collections uh, were dictionaries and tuples. Uh, dictionaries being the more important of the two. Uh, a dictionary, if you're used to Java, is called a map. Uh, so same thing, dictionary, map. I think Python uses the term dictionary as well. Other languages call it associative arrays, uh, where really it's just instead of indexes, it's just got some key and some value. One thing that's a little bit different about Swift is a lot of languages use curly braces uh, for their dictionaries, uh, like JavaScript, Python, things like that. They've chosen to stick with brackets, so it's just kind of like an array, um, but it's actually got pairs. They did use colon, which is the same as a lot of other languages. So here I've got a dictionary with, I don't know, seven elements in it or so. Uh, if you wanted to get an element out, uh, you could just say, uh, give me the element for C, uh, which is carbon. By default, what it gives you is an optional. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could do some forced unwrapping uh, and put an exclamation point on it. Uh, it gives you an optional because it might not exist. So here Z doesn't exist, so it gives me nil. And if I try to force unwrap uh, something that is nil, uh, I'm going to get a runtime error. Um, it's showing the error in the wrong spot, but you can see that uh, that it is actually erroring out in this program. So I'll take that off. There are a lot of things you can do with dictionaries. One of the common things is just to iterate over all the, the values. <clears throat> what you can do if you're iterating over all of them is you can actually have the, the index be a tuple. Uh, and so if I've got symbols and names here, uh, and you can see if the symbol is H or the symbol is O uh, that I'm printing out, that it's present in water. Notice that it only says two times here, uh, but if you click on the value history button, uh, you can see the, uh, the printout for hydrogen is present in water and oxygen is present in water. So the value history can be really nice. Uh, also, I wanted to mention tuples. Uh, so tuples are something that we're going to see again here real soon. Uh, but a tuple is a concept that's also present in Python. And a tuple is similar to an array. Uh, but it's more thought of as this is a, a single variable, right? Uh, and so this is a, a tuple. Tuples use parentheses. Uh, they get separated just like this. By default, if you wanted to access something that's in a tuple, you could say dot zero or dot one or dot two, uh, however big the tuple is. There's also some crazy things you can do with name tuples. Don't want to go into all the details on tuples. We'll talk about it more when we get to uh, functions. Uh, there's a thing you can do to return multiple values with tuples that's really slick. So those are some things with collections, uh, tuples, uh, dictionaries, uh, and then, of course, the one you'll use most, uh, arrays. All right, that's it for collections. We'll see you next time. Bye.